What the world now needs and desperately needs is a new generation of economists. And then, of course, the crash came, and a lot of people then started to question the very hom homogenous standard model of economics that's taught in universities around the world. We don't equip economics graduate well enough in terms of knowledge and skills to address current economical, social, and ecological crisis. We need to reconnect the academic discipline of economics with the society that it was always meant to serve. That's the point of economics. Sometimes it feels to me like the floodgates are about to burst, that there's so much criticism coming on economics from different directions. The world has changed, the syllabus hasn't, and it's, it's high time we do something about it. The 2008 financial crisis sent the world hurtling into recession and sparked a wave of criticisms against economics and economists. The economy is suffering while environmental and social issues are also mounting. The world is asking, can economics do better? It's clear we need to build a green and fair economy. It's clear we need more competent economists in dealing with social and environmental issues. But how do we do this? Where should we start? What will be our leverage point to make real change happen? I come to you today to tell you that we should start from the beginning. We should start in the classroom. Because the economic students of today are the economists of tomorrow. This is the message echoed by a growing movement worldwide. If we want better economics, we must first transform the way we educate our economists. For me, there's a, a number of reasons why economics education matters. One is that students are going to use this knowledge in their lives, in positions of influence that they may have, and uh, to try and understand the world and to participate in a democracy. So if their model of how the economy works is missing a huge element or is skewed in a certain way, that's going to affect their ability to understand that world. Why all of us and why all of students studying economics? For a lot of reasons. But one reason we all have is to understand what's going on, understand real world. And the way economics is taught in universities today uh, does not allow you to understand real world economy. At first, students are really quite shocked with what they're being taught in economics. They're being taught these models which their gut feeling tells them aren't a very good description of reality. How I felt when I first started studying economics was really kind of um, bemused. <laughs> I wanted to study society and I wanted to study human interaction. Sadly, it seemed that that was not what economics really seemed to be about, especially um, at undergraduate level. Teachers are very 
keen to say, well, okay, this might be seen as oversimple and overly abstract, but when you get to the next stage in your, in your education, then you'll find that actually the world of economics is much richer. Um, I did my master's at LSE and I felt like we were still being taught in a very narrow framework. People who work in the government said the young economists are really well trained, they have great technical expertise, but they don't understand how to pl apply the models that they learn into the kind of context that we come across in public policy. And they don't understand that actually we're engaging with politics all the time. People in the city said, um, I've got somebody who understands dynamic stochastic general equilibrium models, but doesn't know that there was a depression in the 1930s and can't, can't draw any parallels between what happened then and what's been happening now. And I need them to understand some economic history. They wouldn't really need, know how to deploy the economics that they'd learned to, to a, a real world economics problem. And that seemed to signal that the teaching of economics had somehow um, become too, too removed, had removed the, the study of the subject from the study of the economy. And the it's come out of their degree with this uh, very warped idea of, of what's uh, re research level economics actually is. The syllabus really hasn't changed in a very long time. Some of the theories you're taught, they're very far from where research is today on economics. Behavioural economics, development, uh, new methodologies like randomised control trials. And it struck me that although there had been all this fantastic research on the frontier, none of it was actually being taught. One of the things that economists need to fix is actually changing the curriculum and, and reforming teaching so that some of this um, really genuine scientific advance in the subject is actually passed on to undergraduates because that's not happening. Right now, I think the economics discipline has become more and more and more narrow-minded. Um, not too many decades ago, neoclassical economics, which is the current dominant uh, school of economics, was just a branch of economics. You had other schools of economics, the institutional school of economics, classical schools of economics, Austrian schools of economics, Keynesian schools of economics, Marxian schools of economics. Um, I want the economics discipline to be a subject where you have the opportunity to study all these schools. Because um, right now it's, it's definitely not. let the students who are receiving these courses realize that what they are being taught is one model among many possible models. And also to be taught that a model is not reality. Uh, it's just an interpretation of reality. Although studying the economy could be done in many different ways, I think in the last 50 years, economists have converged on one very particular way of studying the economy, which is mathematical and which is modeling based. So I think when we say neoclassical economics, um, and when we say that neoclassical economics has become monolithic, what we really mean is the methods of neoclassical economics have dominated the whole of the study of economics to the degree that it pushes out other subject areas that economics needs to be concerned with. It does mean that you ask the kinds of questions and you restrict yourself to the kinds of subject matter that are easily modeled and easily kind of reducible to this mathematical framework. One of Keynes's famous quotes is that an economist should be a mathematician, a historian, a statesman and a philosopher. Today uh, an economist is just a mathematician and, um, and yet uh, economists are called upon in policy to make incredibly important decisions, incredibly nuanced and complex decisions. Sure. Goodbye and thank you. Learning from and using the approaches of other social sciences surrounding economics like economic anthropology or economic sociology, often those other researchers are asking themselves the same questions but using different methods like more kind of qualitative methods or interviewing or using slightly different kind of um, philosophical frameworks for structuring their work. And those are all, those can all be done very rigorously in the same way that mathematical economics can be done very shoddily. Um, and I think that by closing itself off to other disciplines, um, economics tends to be very infertile for actually dealing with the intersections of, of those different social sciences. We need to change the way we teach economics. We need to change the pedagogy, and that, that is an aspect that also needs to be opened up. 
we need just to have a plurality of different teaching techniques. Because I think that uh, right now we, we don't even understand uh, how learning happens. Students aren't engaging with problems and it's just one person at the front of the room regurgitating information and all those students are supposed to absorb it, not really ask any questions because there's no time for that. We've got to get through the material. It's a terrible way of teaching. If there were better teaching methods, I think that would allow for more student engagement and more student criticism of the content and it would encourage the lecturer to actually think a bit differently. In uh, a couple of the interviews that I did with students, students said things like, I was told that if I let go of certain values, it would be easier to learn the economic theory. Another one said, if I turned off the critical part of my mind, I found learning economics came easier. That's a really bad sign. I mean, universities are supposed to teach us critical thinking so we can be engaged citizens in the world. And if instead they're, they're teaching us to accept models, to take whatever we're spoon fed and just not be critical about it. To me, that's, that's a sign that we're failing as university professors and as institutions. Education is a method of shaping the way you think and shaping the way you're socialized in society. And if you spend the first three years of like kind of your adult engagement in society being taught economic ideas that are not critical about values, that are not critical about methodology, that are not pluralistic in terms of their approaches to society, um, I think that's really damaging just for the individual economists and I think that's a huge shame. What we need is students to be taught and trained in how to think critically about the subjects that they're, they're studying, uh, to analyze what the consequences of all these uh, po um, economic theories that they're being taught, what the consequences are for society as a whole, and to, to relate to the real world, which is something that's not present in the current economics education. Many students, citizens, academics and institutions are already working to change how we educate economists. Yeah, it's, it's like a big tide, a big tide of change coming from student groups, from institutions, from subsets of lecturers, from the media, from civil society groups, from everywhere. How are they working for change and why? One of the things that has really been striking about the past year or so is the fact that student groups in so many different countries are emerging to demand that what they are, what they are taught must, must change. We read um, in The Guardian that a new society was being formed by economic students that, that were tired of hearing about the same models um, that after the crash have been demonstrated quite accurately that they don't work anymore. Um, the world has changed and the syllabus hasn't changed. So I suppose it, it, it gives the whole idea behind what we are trying to do. Students all over the world have begun to organize by signing petitions, hosting talks and debates, organizing reading groups, and even offering alternative courses for students. My personal motivation is that I would really like economics departments to become the kind of place where um, new economic thinkers who care about social issues, who care about rigorous methodology, who care about intellectual creativity. I really want economics departments to be the places where they want to go to, rather than places that they feel limited by. Whilst I was at the LSE, I felt like I wanted to use the position of strength that we had from within the department as students to organize, to change those departments for the better. And through that, I felt like there was actually a huge number of people who wanted to organize for more pluralistic economics and more people than I'd ever encountered kind of personally. And that's where the idea of setting up a network that would bring those people together came about. So that's how Rethinking Economics came about. You tap into networks that have already started, on it, or little initiatives that have already started on, I don't know, post-crash economics, um, a society for economic pluralism. So it's, it's like, it's like you, 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 you tap the beehive, you, you feel that there's so much buzz everywhere. The teaching of economics is outdated and is connected from the real world, not only in the UK, but 
in many places. We are in conversations with similar networks in, in Germany, uh, people in New York, Pepsi Economy in Paris, student groups in Denmark, in Canada, we're talking to people in Italy, in Beijing, in India, in Brazil. It's very, very exciting. So this is, this is going to be great. <laughs> I think that in this field, um, what unites us is a shared vision of pluralism. If you don't have pluralism uh, in economics teaching, you can't have the tools to understand what's going on. There is no only one theory which can explain what's going on. We think that pluralism involves a little bit of the scaling back of how much neoclassical economics and how much neoclassical methodology dominates economic syllabuses. But that's not to say that we reject the methodology or we think that neoclassical economics is no use or any, you know, any of those, those things because it's really, um, right now we're in a period of crisis within economics. We're in a period of necessary transition. And that requires learning from the current methodologies and finding, figuring out where they are strongest and where a different approach might be more helpful. People who had the motivation to study economics in the first place and try to understand all these topics uh, are thirsty to new approaches to economics um, and to understand these challenges and to tackle them. If there is a better alternative for economics student, students um, um, to, to learn more and understand things better, um, why not go for that compared to what we are being taught today? What is core, or what core stands for Curriculum Open Access Resources in Economics. And the aim of the project is, is to change the core curriculum that's taught to undergraduates. I, well, one of the, the starting points for this project was the ext extraordinary uniformity of what is taught in the core of the curriculum at the moment. It doesn't really matter uh, whether you look in, in a university in Turkey or in Colombia or Australia or here in London, you'll see introduction to economics students and intermediate students seeing a fairly similar diet. Uh, so we wanted to insert something very fresh and our kind of guiding theme, um, which we have as a kind of strap line for the project, is teaching economics as if the last three decades had happened. And what we mean by that is that there have been tremendous advances in economics and that, that means in, in economic theory, in economic history, and in quantitative, quantitative economics over that period. And that, that, that excitement, but also the, the real learning that's happened, hasn't fed into the undergraduate curriculum. We're going to provide what I think will be very attractive material. That's a public good, so that everyone will be able to try it out. And that way, uh, hopefully, we'll keep students studying economics and we'll also be able to attract into the subject uh, maybe a different kind of student who's been put off by the kind of over technical rather arid way in which it's come to be taught um, over the last 20 years or so. Seamus is a student-initiated and partially student-run um, university centre that's a, a meeting place for uh, researchers, students, uh, civil society, and the point is to get people to, to meet around some of the biggest issues facing humanity uh, at the moment. Now, all of the courses, in fact, are run by uh, students or recently graduated students who uh, get the opportunity to construct a course around a theme um, and essentially invite experts in to talk about the, um, or to talk around the theme of the course. At the Global Economy course here at, at CMUS, we try to give uh, students an introduction to economics, which explicitly tells them that there are uh, many different ways of doing economics and many different ways of looking at the economy itself. 
uh, which you don't always find in a more introductory level uh, economics course in, in other, other institutions. Students are coming from various disciplines at different levels, from bachelor, master's, PhD levels. And the only thing they share is really this uh, craving to understand more about economics. Not, not understand more about the economics, but understand how the economy works. And that's where I realized that if you want to give them a fair understanding of how the economy works, you need uh, pluralism. For example, the course literature is so diverse and so wide, like the, the sources we get in touch with and all the perspectives we get mm -hmm. uh, on our plates is very eye-opening, um, not only to like the world around you, but yourself as well. It's also like the fact that it's interdisciplinary, that everybody from different backgrounds and nationalities can take the course. And connect there, yeah. so mm -hmm. many different things, connect yeah. with other people, but also like aspects of society yeah. and of the world. Psychologist Carl Rogers said uh, the only type of uh, knowledge that influences behavior uh, in a significant way is self-appropriated, self-acquired knowledge. And this is one of the reasons we try to uh, get students as involved in possible in constructing uh, their own learning experience or their own journey through, through knowledge uh, over a course. It turns the classroom into a, a very creative space and uh, very, it's very engaging as a student, I think. Yeah. Like you can be creative in a classroom, it's not just about like listening to someone who knows best or better mm -hmm. than you. It's very stimulating and motivating to, yeah. like, to be part of it and to like, don't just sit in a classroom and digest and take in what they're saying, yeah. but really see what you can contribute. And, and it's it's wild. It's yeah. experimental, and it's I think it's it's amazing. I think it's important to remember that at its roots, economics is a moral philosophy. That, that uh, uh, Adam Smith himself was a professor of moral philosophy. And that really it was only mid, late 19th century that the idea of economics as a normative, value-free mathematical science is a very relatively recent phenomenon. So really at its roots, in the great majority of the life of economics, it's been a moral philosophy. And moral philosophy is about asking big, critical questions. The economics program at Schumacher College is called Economics for Transition. We want to help people to learn about different ways of supporting a transition from what we would perceive to be an unsustainable and unjust way in which economics operates today to a situation where there's much greater well-being and much greater sustainability. And I think that really what we're doing here is we're, we're beginning in a different place, we're beginning by asking who are we as a species and really what promotes well-being, it simply opens up the whole field of inquiry way beyond the very limited, rather impoverished uh, inquiry that happens in most conventional faculties of economics. I would be pretty sure this is the world's only economics master's programme that, that is very consciously locating economics as a subsystem of ecology from the start. Oikos means home and in this case planet home. Knowing your home is the first step. So how all species fit together, how relationship between all the species work together, that knowledge is ecology. And then uh, economy, which is oikos and nomos, nomos means management. And so ecology and economics are like walking on two legs, knowing your home and managing your home. I think it's an important thing to, to recognise that we don't know the answers to the questions. I think unlike a lot of conventional systems, it's not a question of experts imparting wisdom. It's really a joint inquiry, uh, unfolding inquiry. The word educare is to bring out, not put in. Modern education in other schools and universities is they look at the student and see this is an empty bucket and you fill in information and knowledge. 
uh, whereas here we try to bring out what is in the students. If we're talking about how we, you know, as a species, provide for our collective needs, how we nourish each other, how we work with the planet to to solve that, then actually the, the possibilities are endless. But, so we need to be able to have those spaces where we can rethink, reimagine, resense some kind of future. What we have seen is a growing movement with a diversity of visions on how we can improve the teaching of economics. But can we expect change to happen? What next for the future of economics education? When we know that economics usually changes as, as a discipline after crisis, right? That it, it, it changes the face of the discipline. Uh, now, the, the big disappointment we have is that the new crisis has apparently not led to the, yet to the creation of a new paradigm in, in economics, but you know, we can still hope it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen in the future, with these, uh, especially with these young people. It's very difficult to change the core of teaching in a discipline, and this, this core has become pretty cemented over the last three, three decades, two or three decades. It will be difficult to change. There, there's, there's a feeling in the air, I think, that um, now is a good moment to try to change, that we've got these pressures coming from changes in the world, meeting in some sense changes in economics itself. And I think it's, it's really mobilising these two things that is the, gives us a chance to excite teachers as well as students, employers and so on, that it's worth trying a new core curriculum. I think change will come from many places and it will be a, a hard process. Change is never easy, but we'll get there. So I think young, young students should be confident, um, should listen to their gut feelings um, and really question whether what they're currently doing makes sense. Feeling like you're the only person with those thoughts in your lecture hall is really dis disempowering, but you're like an in intelligent, articulate being. And if you find other people who also want to talk about your ideas too, then you'll start to realize there is a lot more you can build on. It's actually much easier to start to change things than you might believe. It's very easy to start talking to fellow students, to start talking to sympathetic lecturers, get lecturers to talk to you about the things you're interested in. So uh, outside of, of, of class time, if necessary, and you will realize how easy it is to start changing things within your department. Yeah, open, open your eyes and, and your hands and, and just get on with it. It's very, very easy. You, you start very small and you can go as far as you want. <laughs>